Today, I'm going to demonstrate the markings of a bilobed flap. Now, the bilobed flap is most commonly used for resurfacing defects for the tip of the nose or for the lateral nasal wall. Now, it is important to note that the bilobed flap is used for defects that are circular in shape. So, just as in case of transposition and rotation flaps, we used to triangulate the defects. In these cases, the defect created must be circular in shape. To plan this defect, it is important to follow a geometric design. So the defect that is circular in shape is first marked and it is important to first know what is the radius of the defect. The radius will help us mark the remaining parts of the flap. Now after the radius of the defect, it is important to find out the pivot point. Depending on where you have your maximum skin laxity, that side we will be planning the flaps and that is where the pivot point shall fall. So the pivot point is taken from the defect at a distance equal to the radius of the defect. So again from the defect another radius length is taken and at that side will be the pivot point P. Now this pivot point is very important for all practical purposes because this will serve as a landmark around which the remaining flaps are drawn. Now starting from the pivot point P, we have to consider an imaginary angle of maximum 90 or 100 degrees within which the flaps will lie. Now to mark the flaps, two concentric circles will be taken into consideration. The first concentric one is drawn at a distance of 2R from the pivot point. So this will be 1R and this is the second R. So from keeping the pivot point, the first concentric circle is drawn, that is at a distance of 2R. The second concentric circle is drawn at a distance of 3R from the defect beginning from the pivot point. So this would ultimately be 3R. Now these concentric lines are important because it is within these lines that the two flaps that we have to mark will lie. Taking these as the landmarks, the first flap is marked exactly adjacent to the defect, beginning from here. And this flap should be exactly the size of the defect. It should cover it completely. Now, the next lobe of the flap, since there is more skin laxity on that side, can be a little smaller than the first lobe. And it is marked so that it is a bit more elliptical in shape to avoid the formation of a dog ear. So this is the first lobe and this is the second lobe. After we have drawn the flaps, the movement is checked so that the first lobe will come in position of the defect and the second lobe will come in the position of the first lobe and the second defect will be closed primarily. So ultimately what the suture line would be will be such that the second lobe is closed in a straight line, second lobe goes in the position of the first lobe and the first lobe goes in the position of the defect and extending up to the pivot point. So this will be the final suture line. It is important to note that no dog ears should be formed when such a flap is marked and since there are concentric movements, there can be formation of trapdoors or a pin cushioning effect. So it is important that these flaps should have a layered closure. The explanation of a bilobe flap is very well given in volume six of Nilligan sorry, volume three of Nilligan, chapter six, which is aesthetic nasal reconstruction on page 143. That is a geometric bilobed flap.